everybody. I'm Dr. Rachel Rubin, urologist and sexual medicine specialist in the Washington, D.C. area. This is Sex Matters, and I'm here today with my friend uh, and colleague, Dr. Matt Ziegelman, who is the sexual medicine expert at the Mayo Clinic, who does all things men's health, penile curvature, uh, testosterone, sexual function. So I thought today would be a good way to start talking about penile curvature. Uh, we see so many patients come in who are very distressed. They feel a lump, they feel something in their penis, and they go straight to their primary care doctor. And so I brought in Dr. Ziegelman to help me talk through what do we do in that situation? How can we help our patients? First and foremost, I think it's important to acknowledge that this is this is actually incredibly common. It suggests that, that maybe three to even 10% of guys have some signs or symptoms of this condition. So one normalizing this for guys is that this is something that you know, you, we've seen before that we have treatments for one of the biggest concerns men have when they find something new is, is this cancer, right? And I will say that uh, I have not, I have yet to see these signs and symptoms be cancer, but we can provide them with that reassurance. But I think more importantly is that this has a really significant impact on men. It has an impact on the relationship. It has an impact on their psychological well-being. It has an impact on their sexual function. And we think that sexual health is overall health. So getting guys in to see us uh, through through those referrals is, is excellent. And we can provide them with you know, counseling. We can provide them with treatment if they're interested. And sometimes it's just providing them with that reassurance. And we're, we're grateful to have that opportunity. There, there's a small subset of, of guys who are born with natural curvature. And that's, that's different from Peyronie's disease. But it still can be associated with a lot of psychological bother and, and uh, we still have treatment options available for them as well. So for the primary care doctor, um, you know, counseling sees these patients, they come in with a lump. Um, first of all, it's not cancer. That's super helpful. And then when do they refer to urology and, and what happens? You know, they always want We want to tell our patients what's going to happen when you go see a urologist. You know, people do not like penis problems. We were used to it. We see it all day long. But but how do we kind of tell the patients what's next? What actually is in our toolbox to help people and couples who are dealing with penile curvature? So there are a lot of resources that are available that you can sort of turn your patients on to the, for example, the Sexual Medicine Society of North America has a patient-facing website called Sex Health Matters, lots of information about Peyronie's disease and lots of other aspects of sexual health. Um, if the patient's bothered and wants to learn more about this condition, about treatment options, just get that reassurance. We wanna see them. Uh, we've got lots of options. It can be as simple as a conversation and a physical exam. That's really all we need to make this diagnosis. And if they just need that level of reassurance. We can do that without anything invasive. Now, if we're interested in sort of more definitive treatment options, sometimes we need to do a little bit more invasive testing. Sometimes we'll have patients bring in photographs of their erection to help establish the changes they see in the shape of the penis. Sometimes we'll actually administer medications in the office and do more invasive testing, but we'll always walk the patient through that. We wouldn't expect them to have that level of counseling before they before they come in. This always starts with a, a history, a physical exam, getting to know the patient, getting an idea of what level of bother they have related to their condition. What about the patient saying, doc, did I do this to myself? I broke my penis, what do I do? Yeah, so that's a common sentiment is how the heck did this happen? Did I do this to myself? Your patients did not do this to themselves. Uh, there are things that we can do about this. There's a lot we don't understand about why this happens in a subset of men. Um, and part of our, approach is acknowledging what we know and don't know and uh, sort of partnering together as far as options for treatment. Really important to support your patient's uh, mental health because this can be really devastating. And so what are the treatment options from conservative to sort of very invasive? What, what do you recommend for patients? Yeah, so I mean, it can be as simple as observation. If if someone is just needs that level of reassurance, uh, we have plenty of, of men who are, are just looking for that that sort of acknowledgement that this is not cancer. If it, if they're okay moving forward, observation is totally reasonable. This is a benign condition. But for men who are more bothered by their curvature, we'll talk about options. There's some oral medications. Usually we use those to optimize their rigidity of the penis if they have erectile dysfunction, which many men are suffering from as well. We can use devices called traction or vacuum to stretch the penis and stretch the area that's curved. We can use injections of medications, including FDA-approved 
medications that we can inject in the penis in the office. And then for some men, either later on in the treatment protocol or right away, we'll offer surgical intervention. So there's a whole host of options. It's a very individualized approach. Uh, we like to give people those options and then use a shared decision-making model because it's not a one-size-fits-all. Thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, I think the real takeaways here are there is hope that there is a lot of hope and there are doctors out there who uh, care very deeply about these subjects and are there to partner with you to figure out the right treatment strategy. And so smsna.org, the Sexual Medicine Society of North America is a great way to find a provider like Dr. Ziegelman or myself or any of our incredible colleagues out there throughout North America um, and th really throughout the world. Uh, you know, there's other organizations as well. So thank you for joining me today and uh, join us next time.